Back in the year 1987, a mystery started, but I didn't know it yet. Here nearly 40 years later, I've often wondered about it, and this week I'm a bit out of action with a stinking cold, which explains why my voice sounds a bit different in case you were wondering. But as I never want to leave you without a weekly video, I thought it the perfect time to tell this story from the Commodore 64's past. You see, it turns out that, for all my regrets about giving away my Commodore 64 and all the programs I'd written, I was actually in a way a tiny part of the development of commercial programming software for that very platform. Of course, age 14, I had no idea how cool this would seem to me when I was 50, looking back in awe at those cool Ferrari driving software devs of the 80s. But here we are. Picture it, London, 1987. I'm living in the family home that I've shown to you before with my Commodore 64 on its desk here in the window. When we bought the house, we inherited tenants who lived in the flat above my room. And one day, one of them mentioned that his company were planning to release a new programming language for the Commodore 64 called Microtext. Now, I can't remember his name, Sadly, my parents are no longer around to ask, and my sisters can't remember the tenants' names either, though Faithy Fractic says the name Roger rings a bell. Maybe he'd forgotten his key, so let's just call him Bob. He knew I had a C64 and asked me if I would like to review it for them to help them with their market research before launch. Naturally, this was interesting to me, but when he said it came on disc, not tape, I had to confess I didn't own a 1541 disc drive, much though I wished I did. So imagine my teenage delight when he said they could lend me a drive to go along with the disc. Incredible. Soon after, I had the disc and drive in hand and eagerly set it up on my C64 system. Finally, I was seeing how the other half lived and it was glorious. This was the same C64 that I would later convert into a slimline case, exposing that gorgeous PCB in the process. Which reminds me of PCB, PCB way, 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 where you can get great quality PCBs starting at just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Perifractic's Commodore Bedroom, doesn't it? I set about playing with the software, and rather than explain it here from memory rather handily, I actually wrote the review for them using the Amstrad PCW8256 that sat downstairs in my dad's home office. And I still have the disc the review is on, so let's load it up and see what it was all about. Albeit through the rather naive and not entirely grammatically perfect 14-year-old mind of this wannabe reviewer. You see, right then, I was a Zap64 subscriber, probably with dreams of someday becoming the editor. Huh, fat chance of that. Oh look, here's the exact date I wrote this, Sunday the 3rd of May, 1987. That was a good day. It's also interesting that I used .bob at the end. This tells me the tenant's name was in fact Bob. Lucky guess, hey, if you're watching this Bob, or if you're a relative of Microtex Bob, please drop me a fax, you son of a Bob. When I received the Microtex package, I thought that it was going to be just another ordinary programming language that took months to learn how to use and there was going to be pretty useless, but I was wrong. Um, with one glance through the manual, the first thing that struck me was that it was surprisingly simple to use and I started to realize that this was far from a boring old programming language, but was a very versatile user-friendly package that converts almost all of the normal basic commands into an easy to learn programming package. Microtex is very user-friendly, which was very pleasing to discover as almost all of the current packages packages available take weeks of studying manuals and learning the language. Microtext is quite different. The, the language is very simple and at the same time very versatile. Let's say you wanted to move something across the screen, you just draw it using asterisks and commas and then type the command animate and the locations for animation and what could be easier. The sound on Microtext is amazing. Now, exactly the same sounds could be achieved in BASIC, um, but for a simple tune you would have to type a long program with pokes and data listings. But with microtext, you just type the command sound, followed by the voice, volume, for pitch, etc. I found it incredibly simple and was very pleased with it. I had produced my first program within one minute of opening the manual and was very pleased with what could be achieved in such little time. The versatility of the package is one of its most outstanding features. With a package as simple as microtext, I thought that little could be achieved with it, but again I was wrong. Just the normal question and answer type programs were easy enough to write, but what can be achieved with sound and graphics alone is amazing. Microtext has a command of its own for just about every basic command that exists, and Microtext commands are much simpler than other languages I've come across. There are very few things wrong with this package. In fact, I have only two complaints, which is more than can be said for other packages. 
these are a the manual is far too big a better size would be that of the commodore manual and also ring binding would make it much easier to use b it would be much better if you could write programs in microtext and be able to load them up independently of the microtext disk this would mean professional programmers could use it to write their own programs and also that you wouldn't need to load up the disk every time you just wanted to run one program. Um, overall, I think that Microtext is very pleasing to look at and to use. The package is very good and the welcome program gives you a good taste of what can be achieved by doing so little. Um, the demonstration programs are also very good. Overall, I found Microtext very simple, versatile and user friendly to use. And if I buy a disk drive, I will look forward to using it. Overall rating, 89%. Hmm. Why does an AI clone of teenage me trained on tape recordings of me in school sound like Dan Wood? Anyway, it's funny. I remember wondering if they might let me keep that 1541 drive as thanks for my work. And I hinted at the fact I didn't own one at the end there as you heard, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But alas, the drive was swiftly requested back by the tenant and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Just kidding, I didn't even get a t-shirt. But what I did get were these wonderful memories. And I have to point out, with the hindsight of 36 years, I think I might have misunderstood them wanting more of a constructive market research opinion. Whereas I seem to have taken the mission to be to write a sort of kids Commodore user magazine review, which ultimately might not have been very helpful for them. Maybe they were too polite to tell me. Although, had they set out some specific questions, that probably would have helped too. Either way, naturally, I always wondered what became of Microtext for the Commodore 64. I never heard of it again, but there's loads of stuff I haven't heard of, so surely it was just a Google away, right? Wrong. As you heard, it was great. And yet, it simply does not seem to exist. So to the research. First, I found Microtext by Acornsoft for the BBC Micro and other computers. This seemed like the obvious candidate. Perhaps they'd shifted gears from the C64 to the BBC. Indeed, I found interviews with the devs, including mention of an administrator named Bob, Bob Watson, where it turned out they'd shipped copies of Microtext to most schools. Pretty wide distribution then, but studying the reference card and research paper, although it did replace certain basic commands with somewhat simpler ones, they weren't as intuitive. The commands also had dollar signs before them, and there was no animate command or talk of drawing the animation using asterisks and commas. Here, the commands seemed a little more like those confusing languages I had criticized age 14. But then the clincher. Look, this was released in 1983, four years before the one I was critiquing was preparing for launch. So this is simply a program that's the same in name only. I think, I mean, I suppose it is quite a coincidence them both having a Bob involved. Bob. But with that date, and that this one was also a Laserdisc controller, there seems to be too many differences. Next, I found an adapter for the C64 called Microtext that allows you to view Teletext on your Commodore. For those unfamiliar, Teletext was a series of computer pages broadcast alongside British TV that allowed you to view news, weather, TV listings, and all sorts of other stuff. In many ways, it was a precursor to the internet for us, but not our Microtext. Next was Microtext by Ariadne Software, a video disc player for the Amiga. And there was a mention in those 1983 Microtext interviews of them working with Ariadne. So it seems this was a 1988 iteration that took advantage of that video disc control. But much though, I want this to be the mysterious programming language I played with on the C64 a year earlier. I just can't see a clear connection. Now, this is usually the part in my videos where a big revelation happens, nostalgic music swirls to a climax, and we're all very satisfied indeed. But it can't be like that every time. And this is a rare example. There's literally nothing whatsoever out there about it. No D64 or PRG files, no magazine ads, no reviews. Well, one review, mine. I even posted about it on several Commodore forums. Seven years later, no replies. As a last resort, I thought I'd ask Eliza, uh, I mean chat GPT, and it told me about a post it had found about Microtext on a Commodore 64 forum. My post. Yeah, when even ChatGPT references only your own search, within your search, you know you're in trouble. And that, my friends, is where the trail goes cold. Microtext for the Commodore 64 simply does not exist. Could it have been renamed and exist under different branding? 
If so, chances are someone watching this recognizes the features and can let us know. Or could it have been a C64 1987 offshoot of that 1983 Aconsoft language and 1988 Amiga LaserDisc controller that Bob decided not to proceed with? Or could my feedback have been so harsh that they abandoned it on my word alone? After all, I did criticize that you had to own Microtext to load a Microtext program someone had written, which, when I think about it, and in fairness to my young counterpart, is actually quite a limitation. How could one ever distribute one's programs to others? And let's not forget how I politely told them that I first thought it was going to be pretty useless. See, I never lost my charm, but in all seriousness, I doubt my feedback stopped them in their tracks. But wait, genuinely, just as I was wrapping up this video edit, ready to publish it, my sister texted me to say she remembered that the tenant's name was Bob Watson. Ha ha ha! You could have told us a bit sooner, sissy fractic. Amazing! Through some detective work and my handily choosing the file extension .bob nearly 40 years ago, we've solved a small part of the mystery. The language I critiqued must have been a later version, Acornsoft or Ariadne or the National Physical Laboratory where Bob worked were developing for the Commodore 64. And this new research led me to this, a pre-release user guide for a BBC micro version given to Suffolk Police in 1984, a full three years before I got my Commodore pre-release version which probably looked very similar to this. And there, at the bottom, it's our Bob, along with a Nigel Bevan, who it seems wrote the user guide with Bob. But none of this solves the enduring mystery. Where did it go? Why wasn't it released? Alas, all my attempts to contact the team behind Microtext have gone unanswered. If you happen to know anything about it, please drop me a message via perifractic.com slash leads or send me a fax. And of course, I'll update you, the viewer, if that happens. And if it does exist, I promise my subsequent review in Zap64 will be a little more mature. I am the editor now, after all, so I'd better act like one. Yeah, I never would have believed that if you told me when I was 14, or that my video about microtext would be being read out by an AI clone of my voice, because I'd lost my real voice that week. It's okay, I'm sure I'll find it again. It's probably wherever microtext is. <laughs> Well, thanks for listening to this mystery tale, and until next time, subscribe and support below, and cheerio. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics, lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. And I'm gonna have an